Welcome to Community Connection, I'm Maria Soreo. Now on today's show, it's all about our most distinguished residents, also known as seniors. From deals to scams, we're gonna bring you all the info. So let's get started at the Peninsula Senior Center, where they're keeping our seniors very busy. Let's start with deals because I think that everybody always thinks, you know, people get senior discounts for certain things. Do you offer that? Do you tell people kind of what's out there? Uh, we are now putting together a, a list of places that offer discounts to the seniors on the Hill. I mean, we know that uh, Burger King and Subway and McDonald's and, uh, you know, Taco Bell all offer, uh, I think it's either between 10 or 15 percent discount. Um, and uh, is, I'm, is that any day of the week? Any, or? Day, any day of the week. What kind of things do you also do here? Um, as far as I know, you've got some fitness classes that you do. Tell us about that. Uh, yes, we have four fitness classes. We have uh, yoga and balance, and um, then we have uh, muscle one, two, and three, depending on uh, your, <clears throat> excuse me, your abilities. Um, uh, they're twice a week. Um, and uh, we have a creative writing group, which is uh, actually very uh, filled. It's uh, like 25 people at minimum. Um, we have a bridge group that's going on right now. Um, and there were, I think, uh, 27 people or 28 people uh, attending that. Um, we have uh, a movie uh, uh, day. Um, that's once a month. Um, we sold, saw the social network last weekend and had uh, 44 people attend. That's great. Um, and we have bingo. Okay. Um, uh, we have the Hess Park Lectures, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Um, uh, uh, Marty Dodell handles that, and he has a, a, a very group of speakers. I mean, it goes from, you know, dealing with Medicare to, um, uh, you know, doctors to uh, uh, history on the Hill to uh, wartime things. It's just, I mean, it's amazing um, and very, very well attended. So you're keeping our seniors very busy up here, aren't you? We're trying to. <laughs> do you ever have any problem with people that don't want to come out and do things? How do you how do you get them motivated to come out and be just a part of society still? Um, well, uh, it's difficult. Um, uh, first of all, we have to try to get them to join. Right. And um, it's forty five dollars a year, and that's you know sometimes tough for people. Um, uh, but uh, once we get them uh, to join, then we try to call them, try to convince them to come out. I mean, we have events like um, <clears throat> a barbecue. Mm -hmm. It's in the summer. Um, uh, uh, the most that the room next door can hold is 45, so we stopped selling at 45. Oh, okay. um, and it was extremely successful. Uh, we have uh, Thanksgiving um, uh, dinner. And we uh, have a potluck. It costs two dollars to attend, and uh, uh, I cook the turkey and the gravy and the mashed potatoes, and then everybody else brings in everything. And um, and it's that was a huge, huge success. And then for our volunteers, we have a Christmas dinner, um, and uh, I I think actually we are going to have um, more dinners. Okay. Uh, or lunches, and I actually think that the people that don't want to do the exercise or go to the things love to go out and, and eat. Um, we also have our travel things, um, our, our day trips. And, um, and what kind of places do you go on the trips? Uh, we go to the uh, Getty Center. Um, uh, we have we go to the boat parade, um, Hollywood Bowl, uh, the Norris Theater, of course. 
And then we have uh, um, uh, trips, you know, European trips and trips to Branson, Missouri and so on. Are so you sure this is only for seniors? Because I think we want to go now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You can go. Wow. Okay. <laughs> okay. We don't have any limit in terms of what a, a senior, our, a senior to us is anyone that's over 20. All these events, where do you hold them? Um, well, mainly here. Okay. Um, starting April 4th, we're going to have, uh, uh, start, yes, the April 4th, we're going to have, um, uh, just an open house at, uh, the annex, which is located next to the library. Right. Uh, it's from 10 to 1230. It'll be coffee. We're going to have the Wii games and, um, and cards and just chatting and coffee and, um, that that should be a lot a, a lot of fun. We have a caregivers group uh, that offer help to people with Alzheimer's uh, uh, or you know people caring for Alzheimer's and so on. So I mean there's so much that we have. Um, it's exciting. It is. Now, do you have you have volunteers as well? Is that right? Oh, good grief! We couldn't survive without volunteers. Um, we have. I think it's like 4,000 hours of volunteers every year around there. And, you know, translate that into dollars. Yeah, we couldn't afford it. Yeah, right. Well, but, you know, I think what they get in return as well is also it is pretty huge. So, well, I, I, well, I think so, too. Yeah. Um, but uh, we have, uh, you know, I'm full time and then we have uh, one part time uh, person that's two days a week and then we have another part-time person that's involved mostly in travel and that's three days a week All right, and for more information where can people go um, well one our website um, and that's www.pvseniors.org uh, um, they can email us uh, at seniors at pvseniors.org um, uh, they can come to us right here at City Hall, our PV City Hall. Okay. We're in the two trailers here. Uh, or call us at 310-377-3003. And another great service that we found on the hill is a community-minded service station where every Tuesday our seniors get a full service break. about this, the concept of Senior Tuesdays, how you came up with it? Well, I'd like to take credit for it, but it really wasn't my idea. It was a customer of mine uh, whose parents lived down in La Jolla, or they lived down in La Jolla at that time. She was down visiting her customer, her parents and went to get gas and they had the Senior Tuesday and came back and she told me about it. And so that was 18 years ago. We've been doing it ever since. I've been driving up here for quite a few years and I always see it jam packed down here on Tuesdays. Do you have regular customers that come back to you? Absolutely. They love Senior Tuesday. The slogan is Senior Tuesday is for everyone. So it's, it, it really truly is for everyone. And not only is it uh, fun for our customers who can come in and have their gas pumped and the oil checked and sit in the car and enjoy that and the tires checked and fluids checked and all that, it's good for our employees. Uh, what it's really done is it's helped me to train a new generation of employees who really don't know uh, what it is to give service because you don't get service anywhere. And so when I tell them, go and talk to the customers, they're, they're, they're awkward in doing that. But soon, Senior Tuesday makes it okay. When was the last time you saw somebody do the windows? I mean, I even pull up here and they're doing my windows and they're bumping the gas and it's like a luxury. Isn't it pretty cool? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's, it's, a, it's an era gone by. And I still remember when I began driving, I remember gas was under 20 cents a gallon and they pumped your gas, they washed your windows, they checked the tires and that was all part of it. And then it all went away and there is very little service left and, and, and virtually no service in our industry. And so for us to um, offer it, it it's, it's a treat. It sets us apart from our competition 
And it's been incredible for us internally in terms of getting our employees to understand what it is to give service. Can you tell me how long you've been coming here? I've been coming here for a long time myself, and I just think it's an amazing program. Have you been coming here a while? Yes, I have. Okay. Yes, it's wonderful. Yes. I sometimes, I have to tell you, sometimes I forget about this wonderful Tuesday. I try to remember every time, but you know. Anyway, it's so, it's a lost thing, isn't it? Isn't Nobody it? does this anymore. I was going to say, it's such a treat to have somebody do your windows, they check your tires, they do everything for you. I'm, I'm just loving it. You know, and he says, of course, your tires are low. Well, of course, because I don't do it. <laughs> so you have an auto repair shop. So let's talk about the, the discounts that you offer for seniors for that. Okay, so the auto repair shop is Hillside Auto Repair. It's right across the street on Hawthorne and Newton. And um, we've been in business for 20, this is our 27th year. We are AAA's top rated repair shop and we offer senior discounts every day of the week. It's 10% um, on, on the labor on, um, on all repairs. Thank you for coming. Back again. And because you're never too old or young to learn, we have a class for you that will get you up and running in the world of cyberspace. Well, the class is, is oriented towards seniors. It's sometimes called senior computing. And it is designed for really seniors who have never used a computer. It is absolutely basic. It's, uh, there, are, there are actually six weeks of it. It's once a, once a week on Wednesdays. It's one hour at a time. Because I figure you know, more than that is kind of hard to absorb. The nice thing about it is we are able, every senior is able to sit at a computer and actually do things so it's hands-on. When you sit down and, and just try to take notes, even if you get all the notes right, it doesn't quite fit. If they're there moving the mouse and hitting the keys, then they, then they learn what they're doing. And almost everybody who has come here, at least initially, is somebody who has gotten a computer and never had a computer in their life. Our first hour goes into how do you turn on the computer, how do you safely turn it off, and then we show them how to use the mouse in very basic features. How do you maneuver around with a mouse? And then we go into one on the internet, one on email. Uh, we have two on Word, the word processing program, because that's much more complicated. And it's all very basic. I just try to teach them enough to get them started on whatever their platform may be. So there are all kinds of different ways of, of using the internet. We, we show them the basic ones. Uh, all kinds of different emails, and they have slightly different ways of working things are quite often slightly different places on the uh, monitor itself where things may be found and I just show them how to do it basically and figure they can go on from there. The One of the most important things that seniors get out of it is a really a feeling that they can do it. We go as fast as the slowest learning student. So if, if we have to wait a couple, if you all have, have gotten it and we have to wait a couple of minutes so I can help somebody else, practice. Each time they come in, they say, I learned something new. Even though you did it before, I didn't really get it. Now that now I got, now I get it. I can be better on the computer. Any little thing they can learn is, uh, is marvelous to them. It's like, and, and learning to, uh, getting comfortable with the computer is opening a whole new world for them. Well, the easiest way for somebody who's not familiar with the computer is they can call me direct and just say, I want to know about the computer class, and I'll tell them, Anything I can, I'll try to answer all the questions. My phone number is 310 area code 729-7666. And finally, we have to look out for our seniors, especially when there's people out there who look to take advantage of them. I caught up with Andy Gill at the Lameda Sheriff's Department, who tells us more. lately had a, a rash of people going around checking cars to see if they're locked. If they're unlocked, they're going to go through and they're going to rifle through the car, take whatever they can. And the other thing they do is, you know, if they see someone's GPS still mounted on the dash right. or a lady's purse in the car, they're going to break a window or jimmy a lock and they're going to steal it. Now, is it, is it easy to, to break into a car? Is that an easy thing to do? I mean... It's just as simple as breaking a piece of glass. Yeah. Yeah. And, I mean, a guy can get in and out of a car breaking a window 
in seven seconds and he'll be gone. Well, the same, I think, with a house as well, a home. Is it, is, it, is it good to have an alarm on your home? I mean, is that preventative? It can be. A lot of people put the signs out front, you know, ADT or whatever the alarm company may be, that does it. In the past, we've had burglaries where someone will knock on the door to see if anyone's home. Yeah. If they answer, oh, I'm here, you know, uh, representing this pest control company. If no one answers, they'll go around back, break a window, and ransack. We've had several of those type of burglaries in the last two weeks. I don't know if they're, we don't know if they're doing the knock and notice thing on the front door or not, but they are breaking in through the back windows. What kind of scams are out there that people can be aware of that you see? The common ones that I see is the lottery scams where someone claims this person either gets a letter or a phone call saying they've won a lottery. Usually it's a Jamaican lottery or in England or in Africa. And they're saying, we need you to send us a check for either four or $5,000 to finalize the taxes and other payments towards the million, $2 million you may receive. Well, once the money is wired out of country, if they hear from the person again, it's only to get more money. And most of the time, their money is gone. Now, is that usually something that comes through the mail and has a phone number attached, call this number, and then there's somebody there that they actually talk to, so they think it's legitimate? Yes, or, or they get a lot of these through email as well, oh. and they email correspond. You know, it, it's so awful to think about the fact that, you know, our mail is being abused, and the, I know the phones as well, because I know a lot of people will get phone calls from people saying, you know, donate to this, donate to that, and then they send a check somewhere, and it's not even a legitimate place to send a check. That's common. Yeah. And do you see these in different times of the year more than others, or, or how do you hear about them? No, they, they happen all year round. I investigate a lot of the crimes against the elders, so I get them on my desk after the deputies have already written the first report. Okay. And most of the time, like I said, by that time, unfortunately, their money has already been spent, and getting money back from a foreign country is very oh. difficult. You, you talked a little bit a while ago about, um, about when people call and say that, you know, I'm, I'm your grandson, I'm your granddaughter, and they need help. How does that, how does that usually go? That's another scam where they will be, get a phone call from someone, and they'll say, Grandpa, is that you, Grandpa? And they won't give a name until the person responds, oh, is that you, and like, say, Jimmy or Joey? Yeah, yeah, it's me. I've been arrested, and I'm in England. I need money for bail. Can you wire me $3,000? And again, it's a wire transfer. And once it's wired to another country, again, that money is very difficult to get back. Now, what's the best way preventatively to, to let seniors know, you know, these things are not legitimate things? For the one with the, the grandchildren, right. confirm your grandchild is overseas first. Call another right. family member. Try to get a hold of someone else. The lottery scams, I have a belief that if it's too good to be true, it's too good. It's too good to be true. Yeah. And normally, if you win a lottery, you don't have to pay taxes ahead of time. Right. That's a very good point. So. Also, you know, when we think about putting our mail out and putting bills out to go, you know, outwardly in the mail, I guess that's dangerous, too. That's another crime we've been having quite a bit of. Somebody will write their check out to pay their utilities. Yeah, exactly. They'll clip it onto their mailbox, hoping the mailman's going to pick it up. Before the mailman gets to it, someone else does. They do is washing the check. They bleach out the name. They rewrite it, and it's cashed. A lot of times on it, somebody will write it for $85 to the electric company. Sure. Well, somebody will add a nine in it, so it's $985 when it gets cashed. Oh, my gosh. Now, how do you find out about most of these? Again, I find out after this person gets their bank statement and notices that there's an $885 or $985 check that's been cashed, and they're like, I didn't write that. Majority of those, those are a little easier to deal with. They're done locally. We have video of the person doing it from mm, the bank. Right. But then again, identifying that person on video is also very difficult. That was kind of going to be my last way to maybe wrap this up is, is how do you find these suspects that, that are doing things like this? Fortunately for us, they do it quite often. Okay, yeah. <laughs> they don't do it one time They're repeat stop. offenders, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So we have a lot of times we'll do with the local law enforcement, LAPD or Palos Verdes Estates, and someone will know who they are. Oh, if really? If that doesn't work, we go to the news media. I had one case where I didn't have anybody. I had a picture of someone I put out in the newspaper, and I got a phone call. Oh, that's a family member of mine. That's this person's name. And she was wow. later arrested, convicted, and is in prison right now for identity theft. Now, is it usually somebody in our own neighborhood, or do people come from out of town and, and sort it's, of stock different neighborhoods? I wouldn't say it's out of town, per se, but like the ones we're getting in Rancho Palos Verdes, they're probably somewhat local because they know the areas. They know the ins and the outs. If you're not familiar with Rancho Palos Verdes, you can easily get lost up there. Right, absolutely. So. Now, do, do people sort of, I mean, if they're coming into your neighborhoods, do they look for elderly people? Do they look for seniors and then kind of say, you know, I, I saw two older people that live in this home, or, or how does it work? 
On some they will, but majority of the mail thefts, they're just driving down the street yanking them off the mailboxes. Wow. So I guess something preventative would also be for um, for seniors, especially, to get on a do not call list or get on the do call do not call list. Try to verify someone who who they are prior to giving money. Okay. And that's you know you can get a phone call from the policeman's ball asking for a hundred dollars. Try to confirm who they are before you give money away. Right. And then I guess like you said before, if it's too good to be true, it's usually too, too good, good to be, to be true. true. And that will do it for us today. Thanks so much for joining us on our show dedicated to seniors. And for more information, you can always go to pvseniors.org. I'm Maria Sorreo, and we will see you next time.